In this video, we're ranking every single non-Sunset Destiny 2 hand cannon into a tier list for PvP. Bungie's made some major changes to the hand cannon meta recently and also added some brand new hand cannons for us to examine. We're going to go through all of them in alphabetical order and rank their performance in the Crucible. Once again, we're going to be splitting up the A tier into the A plus and A minus tiers to give us a little bit more breathing room for the subtle advantages towards the top of the list. The Ace of Spades is an exotic 140 RPM hand cannon in the Kinetic slot. It's basically a hand cannon with almost every perk you could ever imagine mashed together. Ace performs excellently at range and it delivers some massive flinch to your enemy. The radar doesn't go away while you're aiming down sights, which also helps you keep track of your opponents even in the heat of a gunfight. The exotic perk Memento Mori loads 6 shots of bonus damage after a kill and a reload. This gives you a massive damage boost, allowing you to get a kill in just one headshot and two body shots. Sure, the perk does go away if you switch weapons, but the lethality of Ace with Memento Mori is just so unbelievably high that you're going to be winning the majority of your duels. Even in its base form, Ace easily lands in the S tier, and with Memento Mori activated, Ace is just off the charts. No question about it, Ace is the best hand cannon in the game as of Season 15. Ancient Gospel is a legendary 140 RPM hand cannon in the energy slot. It drops from the third encounter of the Garden of Salvation raid, which means that you can attempt to get this drop only three times per week, but then you're locked out. Fortunately, the Ancient Gospel also has a very small perk pool filled with some all-around amazing choices. Aside from Dragonfly, basically everything else is a solid option for PvP. Most notably, you can get Slideshot and Rangefinder together to significantly bump up the Ancient Gospel's range. This, combined with the high base stats, will give you some amazing dueling range. Of course, Slideshot will also boost your stability and reload your magazine partially, meaning that you'll never have to stop in the middle of a gunfight just to reload. You can also be very aggressive and evasive by sliding, without getting punished so hard by that recent slide nerf thanks to Slideshot. There are also many other uses for the Ancient Gospel, for example on Bottom Tree Striker or Middle Tree Dawnblade, combining the damage boost from the melee ability with Splash Buckler will give you enough damage to kill your opponent in just two headshots. I feel like the Ancient Gospel can empower you to make some very creative plays and I honestly wonder why more players aren't using it. Maybe it's because it's so hard to get. Or maybe it's because of that incredibly blocky and obstructive gun model. Or maybe it's because your confidence in a duel will be shaken by the fact that it sounds kind of like a water gun. Personally, the aesthetic just kills it for me. Ancient Gospel has some great stats and great perks, but I just can't seem to land my shots with it, so I'm going to put it in the A- tier. If it works for you though, don't be afraid to use it because on paper it's an awesome hand cannon. The Annual Skate is a reissued 140 RPM hand cannon in the energy slot. It's a direct competitor to the Ancient Gospel and slightly worse in almost every way. Nonetheless, it beats the Gospel in aim assist and most importantly it doesn't share that same chunky weapon model but it still does kind of sound like a nerf gun. While the stats don't look too bad, you have to keep in mind that the sights offer much smaller stat boosts than barrels, which is another disadvantage of the annual skate. The perks on the annual skate are very unique. There's some common consistency perks like slide shot and opening shot, but there's also a few very rare perks. For example, the annual skate is the only 140 RPM hand cannon that can roll with wellspring for the bonus ability energy. It also features Surplus, Time Payload, and Multi Kill Clip, which are each rare on this archetype of hand cannon. With all these options, I think that Slide Shot and Opening Shot is still probably your best bet. I want to give Annual Skate credit for its uniqueness and its interesting roles, but in a toe-to-toe -to -toe duel, it's just a worse form of the Ancient Gospel, which is why it's going to land in the B tier. Bottom Dollar is a 120 RPM hand cannon in the Energy slot. For my rating on this to make any sense, we need to go on a quick tangent about the recent high impact nerfs. Don't worry, we're going to keep this really fast. At the upper levels of Destiny PvP, it's very important to be able to deal a high amount of damage in a really quick burst and from decent range. This is why hand cannons will always be near the top of the meta. They excel at peak shooting from behind cover. But on the flip side, it's also important to have a very snappy feeling weapon with a reasonably fast time to kill to win a straight duel. Keep this in mind because it's going to be crucial for the rankings of the other 120 RPM hand cannons on this list. Specifically for the bottom dollar, it unfortunately only takes one or potentially two of the three boxes. With combinations like rangefinder and explosive payload, you can get a hand cannon that almost feels like a sniper rifle. This is very good at long range burst damage output. A high base range stat combined with rangefinder will get you an effective range above 40 meters. In the world of post nerf hand cannons, this is actually pretty awesome. For context, the Messenger Pulse Rifle operates in about the same range spectrum. Unfortunately, the bottom dollar's other stats are quite poor, meaning that it's going to feel sluggish unless you give up Rangefinder to get Surplus or run it with an exotic like the Aphidian Aspects. 
With the recently changed damage profile, the bottom dollar also doesn't have access to any perks allowing it to natively 2-tap. And with the 12 perks in each of the final two slots, getting the exact setup that you want is going to be nearly impossible. I'll give credit to the bottom dollar for its nice range, but it still does lack in the responsiveness and the lethality department, so I'm going to rank it in the B tier. The Criminal Stagger is a kinetic 120 RPM hand cannon with the annoying trait of being really good but impossible to obtain right now. If you recall, the three most important criteria for a hand cannon are burst damage at range, lethality, and snappiness. Well, the Criminal Stagger can easily take two of these three criteria. If you get Rangefinder and Kill Clip, you're going to have about the same range as the bottom dollar while also getting the ability to two tap from Kill Clip. Unfortunately, Crimmels also does lack in the snappiness department, so if you're using it, I'd strongly recommend pairing it with Ophidian Aspects or Dragon Shadow. The stats aren't amazing, but it does have the ability to two tap at crazy range, and it has a pretty easy aesthetic to use, so we're going to rank it in the A minus tier. Crimson is an exotic 3 burst hand cannon in the kinetic slot. This odd hybrid between a pulse rifle and a hand cannon heals you on every kill that you make, giving you basically the same effect as Devour on a Warlock. In addition to that, it completely refills the magazine on a precision kill and it has some insane looking stats with the catalyst. So where does Crimson go wrong? Well, basically everywhere. The three shots come out really slowly, meaning that the burst damage is actually kind of bad. This makes it very hard to peak shot with, which as we've been talking about is a pretty huge advantage of other hand cannons. The stability is also kind of a mixed bag, because the burst-like nature of Crimson means that the recoil is very vertical and predictable. This leads to a huge difference in the weapon's feel based on your input device of choice. The gun model basically box your vision of the target as it recoils, so you're basically trying to track the health bar and guess where the head is. For mouse and keyboard players, this makes Crimson very awkward to use, which is why I'm going to rank it in the C tier. However, it's not the same story for controller players. The reticle friction from aim assist can do so much of the micro adjustment aiming for you as long as you're putting just a little bit of downward pressure on the stick to control the recoil. With the help of controller aiming along with the forgiving precision requirement and the constant flinch output, Crimson becomes an amazing option for controller players, well deserving of a spot in the A plus tier. Maybe you could even go S tier for 6v6 modes where you can really take advantage of the health regen and the auto reload. Dire Promise is a legendary 140 RPM hand cannon in the kinetic slot. This hand cannon used to belong to the 150 RPM lightweight archetype, and back in the day it was considered to be perhaps the best hand cannon in the game. After the lightweight hand cannons got converted to 140s, Dire kept a lot of its same stats, and it lost two of the main things which made it so attractive, the high rate of fire and the bonus to the mobility stat and the maximum movement speed. These days, Dire is a shell of its former glory, but it still does offer a really nice feeling hand cannon oozing with a lot of aim assist and featuring a gun model that makes it really easy to aim. Competition in the hand cannon department has also increased quite a bit with sluggers like the Adept Palindrome and the Fatebringer entering the picture. So where does the Dire fit these days? Well, the stats are mostly mediocre, but it does have the ability to roll with both rangefinder and opening shot, which gives you some substantial range on your first bullet. You can also go with Elemental Capacitor to have either some insane swap speed or essentially zero recoil depending on which subclass you choose. Some seasons ago, Dire was the cream of the crop, but its time at the very top of the meta has passed. However, it's still a very nice feeling hand cannon that's super easy to use. Maybe I'm being overly generous because of how much I used to love this thing, but when I use it, sometimes it still feels like I just can't miss. So for me, it lands in the A plus tier. One of the most famous weapons returning from Destiny 1 is the Fadebringer. If you clear the Master Templar challenge, you'll be awarded with the Time Lost Fadebringer, a legendary kinetic 140 RPM hand cannon that counts as an adept weapon. Most importantly, this means that you can get bonus stats for your masterwork and you also can use adept mods. I talked in depth about the Fatebringer in a recent video, let me just mention that the Fatebringer has some of the craziest base stats of any 140 RPM hand cannon, which only gets buffed even more if you get the time loss version. The Fatebringer mostly relies on the presence of Explosive Payload, an elite perk on hand cannons. It increases the damage output at range, it increases the flinch output, and it creates a small area of effect explosion. This pairs seamlessly with either Eye of the Storm or Opening Shot to create a dominant hand cannon able to participate in almost any gunfight at virtually all ranges. This has led some players to crown it as the strongest legendary hand cannon in the entire game. I'm not completely sure that I agree with Vaporinger being the absolute best, but one thing is abundantly clear. It belongs all the way up at the top of our list in the S tier. The Finite Impactor is a 140 RPM hand cannon from the Iron Banner that sits in the energy slot. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of good things to say about this one. For most cases, the other hand cannons just do its job a thousand times better. 
The most unique thing about the Finite Impactor is the fact that it gets Elemental Capacitor in the 4th slot, which can be really nice. You can get a huge stability boost from a Void subclass, but other hand cannons get a similar feel without wasting a perk on Elemental Capacitor. On Arc subclasses, the Handling Boost is quite awesome as it can restore the pre-nerf quickdraw feel on your hand cannon. This sounds like a great game plan, but in hindsight, it turns out it might be a bit problematic to center your entire kit around the Arc flavor. I'm gonna go C tier for this hand cannon. The stats are mediocre, and the only thing really saving it from D tier is the fact that it's a 140 RPM hand cannon. Ah yes, Hawkmoon. The hand cannon that looks like a bird, sounds like a bird, strikes swiftly, and for some mysterious reason, it hasn't yet gotten Icarus Grip to fly like a bird. Seriously, the lack of in-air accuracy on the Hawkmoon is so painful that it's basically the only thing holding it back from the S tier. The Hawkmoon has amazing base stats, and being an exotic with random rolls, it can get Rangefinder or Opening Shot to massively extend the range. Its exotic perk grants stacks of Paracausal Charge for every headshot or for every kill. On the final round, Hawkmoon unleashes all of the save stacks into one massive damage bullet. For those players new to Destiny, yes this can one-shot your opponent if you have at least 6 stacks. Arguably though, this isn't really the strongest aspect of the Hawkmoon. Even with just a few stacks, you can two-tap your opponent. Oftentimes this can lead to an easy pick on a Guardian in Trials of Osiris. If only Hawkmoon had Icarus Grip inherently, it would definitely be S tier for me, but unfortunately, I'm going to only rank it in the A plus tier since it does lack the in-air versatility, and it doesn't pack quite as many perks as Ace of Spades. My longtime subscribers will remember my video on the Igneous Hammer from back in the day. If you don't remember this video, maybe you should subscribe right now. In my last hand cannon tier list, I even said that the Igneous Hammer was the only S tier hand cannon in the entire game. It was lethal, it was snappy, and it had some crazy range. But things have changed a little bit since then, and most of the things which made Igneous the best in the game were nerfed at some point. While Quick Draw no longer works like it used to, in Season of the Lost, the Igneous Hammer got access to Elemental Capacitor. Unlike the hand cannons that I mentioned before, Igneous basically comes with the best stats of any 120 RPM hand cannon in the game. Adding to the already amazing stats with Elemental Capacitor on any subclass is going to provide a very smooth shooting experience. In the left slot, you can get Rapid Hit, Overflow, or any consistency perk to further buff the Ignis' performance. It's snappy, it's smooth, and it has the range to deal some big chunk damage from very far away. Its only real weakness is the fact that it lacks lethality after the nerfs, but with the Path of Burning Steps exotic for Titan, you can get it back to its former 2 tabbing glory. The Warlock chess piece Battle of Mantle Harmony can do the same thing for Dawnblades. With Elemental Capacitor on a Void subclass, you can have a hand cannon that feels like a 140 but deals 80 damage for a headshot, which can really catch your enemies off guard when they're low health. It's really tough to rank the Igneous Hammer. It's going to disappoint you from a pure time to kill standpoint, but there's just so much more to the Igneous than the kill time. If you use it carefully with a team, it can definitely be up to even S tier. My friend Shadow dominates in trials with it every single week, but I do realize that most of my subscribers probably don't have a perfectly optimized team. So I'm going to rank the Igneous in the A- tier since it has an amazing stat package, great perks, a great aesthetic, and the ability to apply adept mods. Definitely give it a try in your next gaming session if you happen to have one. The Ikelos hand cannon is a 180 RPM precision frame. Yep, that's about all I have to tell you. Honestly, I don't understand the point of this archetype right now. It kills slower than a 140. It's worse at peak shooting than a 120, and yeah, they do have better inherent inner accuracy, but you can also get that on any other legendary hand cannon with an Icarus grip mod. When getting footage for this video, I was shocked at how bad this thing felt compared to every other hand cannon that I had tested earlier on the list. I can't in good faith recommend this hand cannon for PvP. I'm gonna put it D tier. Judgment is a legendary 140 RPM hand cannon in the kinetic slot. Originally, it came from the Trials of the Nine, and now it's back with random rolls. I recently talked in depth about the Judgment, but in case you missed it, I'll give you a quick summary of the analysis. The Fatebringer duels better than the Judgment. No surprise there, that's why the Fatebringer is in the S tier and the Judgment is not. However, the Judgment does do a lot of things right. It comes with many unique perk combinations which can turn out to be very valuable in combination with a proper build. For example, there's Moving Target and Opening Shot on the table. By itself, I would say the Judgment is an A- hand cannon, but don't be afraid to try it out with some of the builds that I showed off in my other video. Also, if you don't like the clutter caused by double damage numbers, make sure to try out the Judgment because you might actually like it more than the Fadebringer. If you're a Spectral Blades Hunter main, the Judgment also won't mess up your flawless execution like the explosive payload on the Fadebringer does. By the way, most of the footage from this video is actually from my live Twitch stream. 
If you want to catch the next one, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash pattycakes. Our next candidate is the kinetic 120 RPM hand cannon called the Loud Lullaby. Imagine an actually loud lullaby. That'd be horrible at putting you to sleep. That kind of goes with the performance of this hand cannon. Firing a shot with this little stability is going to make it bonk you in the head so hard you're not going to be sleeping anytime soon. This is actually my main complaint with the lullaby. It's very sluggish and it kicks a lot. On the bright side, the loud lullaby can get combinations like slide shot and kill clip which can work really nicely. The stability and range boost from slide shot is super noticeable especially with such poor base stats. Also since the lullaby's magazine is only 8 by default, getting a couple of shots instantly reloaded when you need them is really nice. Kill Clip also gives you the ability to 2 tap which is always a scary proposition. With a roll like this, the lullaby is lethal and it hits at far ranges, albeit pretty unwieldy and sluggish. Even with the 2 tap potential, I can't really justify going any higher than the A- tier. Lumina is an exotic 140 RPM hand cannon in the kinetic slot. It's the only current weapon in Destiny 2 with a strictly supportive roll. As a hand cannon, it's actually pretty bad. Basically, the only good things going for it are the 140 RPM frame and the high handling. Lumina's exotic perk spawns a noble round every time you kill an opponent. If you have a catalyst, this is actually doubled to 2. Then every time you go pick up the noble rounds, you can store up to 5 of them in the Lumina. When you hit fire, you're going to use up these noble rounds and they will seek out your friends. Oh wait, well if Bungie actually gives you teammates, then it will track towards them. The noble rounds will heal your ally and give both of you a 10 second damage boost. This empowers you to do fun things like buff a teammate and then go land a body shot with a high impact snipe rifle for a kill. In my last tier list, I ranked Lumina in the C tier, but I actually think it's grown in power a little bit in today's meta. You see, Bungie introduced many changes to Trials of Osiris which reduced the amount of special ammo available to be used. This means that the threat of getting one shot killed by a special weapon is a little bit less and the primary gunplay is more important than ever. With one shots being more rare, Lumina's damage buff becomes incredibly valuable. With the boots of the assembler on Warlock, your rift will actually generate noble rounds passively while you stand in it, so there isn't even a kill requirement to get the damage boost spread to your teammates. For solo play, I still think the Lumina is probably B tier at best, however that comes with a massive note that for coordinated team play, Lumina with the boots of the assembler is incredibly strong, maybe even S tier with the right setup. Malfeasance is an exotic 180 RPM hand cannon in the kinetic slot. Hold tight because this is the first of two 180s that actually won't be left in the 180 land, aka D tier. With the introduction of easily obtainable damage resistance in the form of Whisper of Chains or the Stag Rift, the exotic perk from Malfeasance has actually become more valuable. If you didn't know, landing 5 shots on an enemy player will detonate an explosion dealing some massive damage to your enemy. Even if your opponent is in a Stag Healing Rift, this is going to delete them out of the rift. It also becomes more powerful when multiple teammates are using Malfeasance together since each slug landed contributes to the 5 total required for the explosion. Unfortunately, this is pretty much where the good things end for Malfeasance. Sure, it theoretically has infinite range thanks to the explosions, but the 180 RPM frame really hurts it badly. Also, unlike the rest of the precision frames, Malfeasance doesn't even come with good in-air accuracy. Look at this side by side with a legendary precision frame while firing from the air. I'm going to rank Malfeasance in the C tier as a hand cannon, but with the note that it's actually more like a swappable with a niche use case, and it can maybe even save the game if you're playing a whole team of stack warlocks camping in those rifts. Nation of Beasts is a legendary 140 RPM hand cannon in the energy slot. At face value, it's a decent hand cannon with a very small and unique perk pool. The most interesting combination is explosive payload and opening shot for that massive range increase and all of the benefits of explosive payload. If you manage to luck out in the last wish raid and get this roll, you should probably buy a lotto ticket. It's almost like having an energy slot at Fatebringer. Unfortunately, not many players are going to have access to such a great roll. I think this has led to Nation of Beasts being criminally underrated as a hand cannon overall. It's a much better choice than the popularity stats seem to indicate. It does have slightly worse stats than the Time Loss Fatebringer, especially in the aim assist department, and the weapon model and the sight aesthetic are also kind of hit or miss. Some people love it and others hate it. So for me, it's going to land in the A- tier. If you ever do play The Last Wish, keep a lookout for this one and for sure don't delete it if you get a god roll. Okay, I'm going to save you some time. Our next three hand cannons are all 180 RPM and honestly, I can't recommend any of these. We have the Nature of the Beast, Posterity, and the Seventh Seraph Officer Revolver. Each of these are precision frame hand cannons which in my eyes are very poor choices in the current meta. They can't match the burst damage or the massive range of 120s, and they kill slower than 140s at base. While their very consistent recoil pattern may seem like an advantage, it actually covers up the enemy while you shoot at them, which is especially a big problem for mouse and keyboard players. 
simply put, the 180 RPM hand cannons are an archetype that needs some love. I'd love to see Bungie perhaps bump them up to 200 RPM so they killed a little bit faster, but for now I'd advise staying away from them. I know that on controller they do perform slightly better for the same reasons that we mentioned with the Crimson, but even then, most of my friends who are excellent controller players tend to stick with the 140s or the 120s instead. We're going to go D tier for all three of these hand cannons. Sturm is an exotic 120 RPM hand cannon in the kinetic slot. It has amazingly good stats, but unfortunately not really any meaningful perks unless you really love sidearms. Its main gimmick is the interaction with the sidearm Drang. Every kill that you get with Drang overflows one shot into Sturm's magazine which will significantly increase the damage output. This allows you to two-tap your enemy after just one Drang kill. You might think that with less special ammo on the field lately, the double primary pairing might be a really good option. Additionally, Drang is a pretty decent sidearm, so this has to be good, right? Well, not really. Sturm was a great choice before all of the 120 nerfs, but now it's basically just a mediocre hand cannon that can't even get Icarus grip for improved in-air accuracy. It feels decent to use, but it's just not that special anymore. Very middle of the pack. That's why it's gonna land in the B tier. Our next hand cannon is the Sunshot, and it's gonna blow your mind. Because it shoots explosive shots, and it's still 150 RPM, and the enemies explode. And, you know, I guess... Okay, sorry, I know this isn't a dad joke tier list. Sunshot has gained a lot of breathing room to excel after the recent 120 RPM hand cannon nerf. Being the only remaining 150 RPM hand cannon, it also has slightly more lethality than the 140s. Plus it has explosive rounds like Fatebringer that extend the damage range, deal more flinch, and also causes enemies to explode which can lead to some really fun sprees. With the Catalyst it has some really excellent stats as well. Still, it's not going to be S tier as I do have some complaints. Obviously, we can't apply Icarus Grip to an exotic hand cannon, which is a complaint about most of the exotic options, but my main problem with the Sunshot is actually this. Look at that muzzle flash. And here's a side by side of how the Sunshot recoils in comparison to a normal 140 hand cannon. Notice how the Sunshot kicks more back and up instead of to the side? I'm not really a big fan of this as it makes aiming the Sunshot feel a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to rank this one in the A- tier with a note that it can get extremely good if you can manage the recoil and also get over that screen flash. The Survivor's Epitaph is a kinetic hand cannon that actually drops from playing the Crucible. It also occupies the absolutely tragic 180 RPM frame which makes it an immediate candidate for the D tier. I do think though that this one has a saving grace, well actually three of them. This would be the three perks not found on any other 180 hand cannon on this list. Perk number one is Kill Clip, which will let you get a kill with two headshots and one body shot after a kill then reload. Unique perk number two is Slide Shot, which will grant you a significant range and stability boost during your slide and then also afterwards. And the third perk is actually a little bit more obscure since it's not really in the third or fourth column. I'm talking about high caliber rounds. This currently rolls only on the Epitaph out of all the 180 options. With a high RPM weapon, high caliber rounds can be extra effective at making your opponents miss by dealing some additional flinch. But still, even with all these benefits on a theoretically perfect roll, the Survivor's Epitaph still ranks in the C tier. But hey, at least it's not another D tier. The last word will let you be a real space cowboy, hip-firing your opponents to death with blazing speed. After its reintroduction in Destiny 2, the last word's gone through quite a journey. It used to be an extremely oppressive hand cannon on mouse and keyboard, but not so hot on controller with the crazy recoil. While it was imagined to be a hip-fire weapon, aiming down sights proved to be more effective. Then it was changed to force the last word to be more of a hipfire only weapon by giving it a damage boost for hip firing. On controller, it's still virtually trivial to land a decent kill time with the incredible forgiveness of the friction and bullet magnetism. On the other hand, it's much more difficult to land the optimal kill time using mouse and keyboard. The last word was specifically tuned to have less stability and less magnetism with a mouse. Pay attention to the background footage. The left is mouse and keyboard, right is controller. My reticle position has not changed one bit between the two shots. While it's not impossible to land a fast kill time for mouse and keyboard players, it doesn't really seem worth investing all the time to learn this from a competitive standpoint. Something like the Multimock SMG can kill from further ranges at just a little bit slower kill time. I will say that sniping with the last word and lucky pants is currently one of my favorite playstyles even on mouse and keyboard, but it is a lot harder to pull off compared to a controller. So this is another weapon that made sense to split it into two separate rankings. As a mouse and keyboard player, I'm going to rank this in the B tier, with the potential to go higher if you really master the hipfire aiming. On controller though, it's absolutely S tier for melting opponents in a 1v1. Next up is the Palindrome, currently my favorite hand cannon in all of Destiny 2. You can probably guess which tier this one's going into. Seriously, I don't even know where to start. 
The Palindrome is a void 140 RPM hand cannon which gets amazing base stats, gets access to adept mods, has rangefinder to stretch out the range to crazy distances, and can get ricochet rounds to grant amazing range and stability bonuses while also killing people behind corners. The third column has a lot of fun perks including killing wind to give it even more range after a kill. The weapon sights are beautiful and clean and the weapon model is slim and stays out of your way. The palindrome is all you could ever ask for from a legendary hand cannon except for maybe explosive payload if you're really into that. There's a good reason why it's a top pick among sweaty PvP players, especially when paired with special weapons like the totally balanced Chaperone or the Eye of Soul sniper rifle. It's an amazing hand cannon and I wasn't joking when I said it's going into the S tier. The Steady Hand is a legendary 120 RPM hand cannon in the kinetic slot. It drops from the Iron Banner and shares our favorite blocky model of the better devils. I made fun of the lack of weapon model creativity in my last tier list, however even after the nerfs to 120 hand cannons, this one still has a lot of great qualities. By now you probably could have guessed that I love Slide Shot for the left column. It's an awesome perk for hand cannons, though there's also Outlaw and Killing Wind as great choices. In the right slot you have a lot of great options as well. I really like Iron Grip for the extra 20 stability even at the cost of reload speed. 120s usually suffer in the stability department, but with Iron Grip you can get a really smooth shooting hand cannon. The slow reload can also be circumvented by either slide shot or a hunter dodge anyways. Swashbuckler is really interesting here too since a melee kill will empower your hand cannon to kill in just two headshots. Watch this clip that I pulled off with the hunter throwing knife. If you didn't know, the titan throwing hammer also does 120 damage, just enough to clean up a headshot from the steady hand. After that you're going to get swash times 5 and you're going to be ready to 2 tap your next opponent. While this is a lot of fun, the effectiveness of the steady hand suffers in more serious games, and I think it's just not quite snappy or lethal enough to compete with the higher ranked hand cannons on this list. That's why I'm going to rank it in the B tier. Thorn is an exotic 140 RPM hand cannon in the kinetic slot which shoots, well, thorns. These thorns tag your enemies for some extra lingering burn damage. Not only does this delay your opponent's regeneration, but it also increases the total damage of the thorn so that you can kill an enemy player in two headshots and one body shot as long as they're running 50 resilience or less. When you get a kill with thorn, the exotic perk kicks in and spawns a remnant. Picking it up grants bonus damage to thorn which means you can two tap your opponents, again only if they're running less than 60 resilience. For many great players, the burn damage and two tap potential are really attractive features and I'd have to agree. Still, we do have to keep in mind that the thorn has pretty poor base stats. Although its handling is awesome, the stability and range are really bad, and it can also be really hard to get used to Thorn's awkward model and side aesthetic. The burn damage does at least partially make up for the poor range stat though, and the burn duration can take enemies out of a fight in modes like Trials when they're waiting for their health to recover. I'm going to rank Thorn in the A plus tier. It's an amazing hand cannon, but it does get outranged pretty easily. You can bet though that if a range boost and catalyst ever comes through, this thing is bumping up to the S tier. True Prophecy is yet another 120 RPM hand cannon modeled like a brick. During the 120 RPM hand cannon meta, True Prophecy reigns supreme with the ability to roll with a combination of rangefinder and explosive payload for some extreme range. It was also subject to a lot of FOMO, fear of missing out, since it was completely unobtainable right when the 120s became the best archetype of hand cannon. Now you have to get absurdly lucky with the gun split for it to drop, let alone getting a decent roll. True Prophecy's base stats aren't the greatest, but it still does have the potential to roll some really crazy range. Also, Elemental Capacitor is a cool option if you want to boost any of these stats. I'm going to rank this hand cannon in the B tier. It's definitely usable, but there's simply better options out there. Volpecula is a new and original hand cannon brought to us in Season of the Lost. It's the first stasis element hand cannon in the game, and it comes with many new perks, but unfortunately it also occupies the dreaded 180 RPM archetype. You probably already know where this one's going, but just let me mention a few of the more interesting perk combinations. Explosive Payload can significantly extend the effective range. There's also Harmony which is a cool lethality perk especially if you get kills with an energy special weapon. I suppose one funny thing is that it can roll with shoot to loot so if you're fully committed to playing the back of the map with a sniper rifle you could theoretically shoot the ammo bricks to never leave your spawn. I don't want to dwell on this hand cannon too much though, it's a 180 and there's really no saving grace for me to rank it any higher than the D tier. Waking Vigil is our last primary ammo hand cannon and it's a really painful one to rank. Back in the day, the combination of slide shot and opening shot on Waking Vigil combined with a 150 RPM lightweight frame yielded an amazing hand cannon, safely in the A tier at the very lowest. But things have changed. Even though the perks got upgraded, the Vigil stats are really what hold it back the most. The handling and aim assist stats are decent, but the stability and range are so low that it just can't comfortably compete with the other 140s. 
Unfortunately, the Waking Vigil has just been power crept out by almost every other hand cannon on this list. Its only saving grace is the fact that it's a 140 hand cannon able to roll with Vorpal weapon. If you have a good roll of Vorpal, keep it around as a swappable option whenever the supers come out in Trials, but for its base form, the Vigil falls steeply from its former glory all the way down to the C tier. Okay, in the last video I tried to be subtle and pretend that the tier list was over at this point, just to bring back Ariana's Vow as a surprise, but apparently a ton of you missed it, so this time we're just going to go straight into it. This is an odd one to rank since it requires special ammo instead of primary ammo, but it is a hand cannon after all, so I figured I might as well put it somewhere. It's also a great pairing with the 120 RPM hand cannon and the Hunter Boots Lucky Pants, since you can quickly swap between the Vow and the 120 to get some really fast and easy kills. Pretty fun. This can work really well when swapping with a bow as well. Plus, Ariana's can breathe fire, which is always a plus. I guess we're going to put this one in the A- tier. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. I have an updated subclass tier list video coming soon as well. If you made it all the way to this point, leave a comment letting me know. I really appreciate you sticking around. By the way, I recently started a Patreon account where I'm planning to upload some videos that don't make quite as much sense for the YouTube algorithm, stuff like map guides, niche builds, and specific fundamental tips for FPS games. It's a great way to support my content directly if you like my videos, and also get some cool perks like access to special channels in my Discord server and Q&A sessions. I think you'd also really enjoy my recent auto rifle tier list. It's a video up on the top right of your screen and also linked in the description.